Hello everyone and welcome to the After Hours Gaming League. This is the playoffs of the 2015 season. We are in the round of 16. This is game two between Amazon, Amazon, and Storm 8. Storm 8 gonna be spawning on the blue side for this matchup and Amazon, Amazon on the red side. Uh, we're not gonna take too long to introduce these teams. Uh, feel free to check out game one to get the background on who these teams are, what charities they're playing for, all that shenaniganry. Uh, but the main thing I want to touch on in this uh, Pikmin phase was the fact that there was no ban of the Sejuani. Sejuani was left open and in particular the first pick from this uh, blue side was a jungler but was the Nidalee. A very bold claim here by this Storm 8 team saying hey game one there was a perfect Sejuani game by Amazon Amazon. We don't think that's what the problem was. We think the Callista was the problem, and that's it. We're not concerned about uh, your Sejuani. We have uh, trust in our sound mechanical play here to be able to deal with the Sejuani. We just gotta have a game where we don't face a nightmare Callista, and we'll be all right. But you know, I really, you know, with. With the record that Amazon Amazon has on that Sejuani, I mean, Iron Sheep, I, again, from my personal scouting, it seems like that Sejuani is the main here uh, for the jungler and has been proven time and again to be a very strong pick here. Uh, somebody that Iron Sheep is very comfortable on, has very sound mechanics, lands very clutch ultimates, as we saw in game one as well. Those ultimates were spot on. So it's a very bold claim here by first picking the Nidalee on this blue side when they left Sejuani open to say, hey, that is not the problem. We have a different comp in mind. We're going to go with the champions we're comfortable on, and we're going to make stuff happen. And speaking of champions they are comfortable on, uh, only second perhaps to Morgana is X-Pike's Soraka. That is somebody that he's very comfortable with, is going to be showing up in the support lane. We're going to see what can uh, get done here. J Knight, very comfortable on the Caitlyn. Probably the main here in this bottom lane for J Knight. Very comfortable on that champion. So, um, goodness gracious, my brain! Karma! <laughs> um, somebody who is a little non-standard in recent uh, patches, but, you know... Uh, again, perhaps aside from maybe two champions of that LeBlanc and Ari, Ari of course being banned out this game, Karma, a very comfort pick here for Sleeper Fox. Definitely familiar with the champion, definitely has good mechanical play on it, and Vladimir uh, rounding out that composition. Going to be able to absolutely, with that Hemo Plague, do insane amounts of damage here. Nidalee, going to be coming and getting that AoE. Karma, going to be coming and speeding herself up, landing those empowered Qs, to get a huge amount of AoE in. Caitlyn, especially if the Hemo Plague's active and she throws out her ultimate on Caitlyn, uh, if she's a little bit far away or wants to wait for positioning to change before she goes in, that Hemo Plague, plague ramp up of the damage is going to do so much work here. I was very happy to see uh, that Vladimir come in in the final two picks here for this uh, blue side. And for the red side, I do want to take a moment, of course, to touch on that Singed. Singed, definitely somebody who uh, is very common for this Amazon Amazon team here. Uh, last game we did see the Cho'Gath coming out instead in the top lane, which I was a little bit surprised to see. Cho'Gath, of course, worked very well with that composition, um, but was a little... I, I hadn't seen too much of the Cho'Gath, and in a game that went spiraling out of control in favor of Amazon, Amazon, Cho'Gath didn't have too much of an impact on that. Certainly didn't misplay or didn't get behind or anything like that, but didn't really make a huge impact on that and contribute to spiraling the game out of control. So we're going to see that pick switch over here to a Singed, who is a champion that uh, this team is far more comfortable on, and is going to look to just rampage through that team, turn on that ultimate, and just run. Poison everyone for days. <laughs> so, um, we'll see how uh, that plays into this team composition here for the red side. Uh, interestingly enough, that Syndra was last picked here um, over, you know, the possible combo of the Cassiopeia using that Singed Poison to get off as many Twin Fangs as she possibly can. 
Uh, so that, that's uh, speaking of you know what, what we harped on at the start of this Pikmin phase. The statements being made by these teams. This Syndra is somebody that is has so much confidence in that Syndra mechanics, even with, um, of course, the changes to the hitbox on her stun. You know, a little bit of rebalancing that's happened in the most previous patches. The confidence to still run that Syndra over possible combo, uh, over possible, you know, Wombo with the uh, Sejuani trying to chain some sort of AoE CC here. Uh, Syndra, of course, does have some potential to do that, but with the Sejuani, that Syndra stun is going to knock people away, and that's not going to be the most reliable way to get a strong engagement there. So it's a very bold statement to say that I'm going to win this laning phase with Syndra, and we are going to get out of control again this game. So, I mean, bold claims made by both teams. I'm going to be impressed by whoever ends up winning this game, uh, as we're going to keep our eyes peeled here. Um, the notable things here are, of course, Singe running that uh, teleport ghost, very standard for the Singe. Vladimir picking up the same thing again, but uh, has the incorrect position for his summoner spells here, uh, as the utility one should be on F, because that's the way it is. <laughs> um, though apparently these teams actually completely disagree with me. <laughs> Everyone running that flash on D. Uh, but regardless, uh, the notable summoner spell here is going to be that Morgana is running that Ignite uh, in the support lane here, looking to get some early damage here, uh, or some early trades that pay off here onto this Caitlyn Soraka lane. And with those Soraka heals coming in, those Ignites are going to be able to stop uh, those heals from doing as much work, and it's going to create a lot of possible kill potential here for these uh, for this bottom lane if they do get a 1v1 or a 2v2 matchup in standard lanes. But that does remain to be seen at this point. We'll see what these teams end up going for here as we see already the red side exploding into a gold advantage for no apparent reason here. <laughs> Perhaps there are some hacks going down and uh, 100 gold was stolen by this very dirty Amazon Amazon team here playing unfair. <laughs> uh, we see the map already being spammed with pings all over the place and it looks like uh, the red side on um, both games is going to look for an early grouping and possible sneaky invade here. Uh, last time when Storm A did it, it was not successful for them, but we'll see if Amazon Amazon can have any better luck here. They actually are going to split Sejuani off to have her go uh, run standard uh, positioning here. And she throw down that ward, throws down that ward in the pixel brush here. Caitlyn does not have view of this team. She does see the Sejuani now, and she is going to back away very quickly. Going to be dodging out that Morgana Q. Blue side does not know where this red team is yet. They're not sure if they're about to find them in their jungle or not. It looks like peeking around that red buff area, they're going to be fairly confident now uh, with those wards that they're not in their jungle, that they did, in fact, retreat back to their own jungle, which is going to discourage... Uh, that Nidalee and Vladimir from going into that jungle to get some deep wards of their own. Though both their trinkets are up, I was uh, a little bit surprised um, to not see them immediately dive in and try and get some deeper wards placed. Though they are going to see those, uh, the Nidalee, swap that out, throw down some caution about possible invades here. Overall, very standard starts here from both sides. Uh, the notable thing being, of course, Karma going for that full regen build uh, with the Flask and uh, Red and Blue Pots here. Excuse me, Help and Mana Pots, I should say. Um, coming out to start, looking to just survive that laning phase, get past the early uh, damage that um, Syndra offers here. And once she does, going to be able to uh, pull off uh, some late game utility here with all of the uh, power her kit provides. Gonna be getting that poke early on as well with those empowered cues. Not gonna be worrying about that mana regen too much as Vlad. Gonna be just poking that singed away. Shouldn't be too much action here in this top lane. Looking to see mostly a slugfest here as 
Vlad got the biscuits, Singed has the full regen. Shouldn't be too much concern here, as it's going to be largely a farm fest. So the early level 2 does catch Jinx, or Jinx, chains that CC with Morgana, and so low is that Caitlyn, and the Ignite coming out stopping those heals from Soraka. Actually, a lot of damage coming out onto Vlad here is taking quite low. Gonna actually have to be a little careful here, chugging through those biscuits here as quickly as you can, but gonna have to be careful with that singe damage. Able to heal up insanely quick as, you know, Soraka, despite uh, her reliance on being able to land her poke, is of course the premier healer uh, of League of Legends, so able to heal them up very quickly here. Vlad actually taking a lot of damage here. Gonna walk back into the poison, and that's actually a pause coming out right now. Excuse me. Ooh, perfect timing here. As I had an insane yawn built up there. Uh, but yeah, we are... I'm gonna be paused just for a moment here. Uh, but just looking at the health bars right now uh, for this Caitlyn and Soraka right now. Already back to full health after what was a level 2 all-in that nearly killed Caitlyn and took Soraka pretty low in her health bar. Um, that is the power of Soraka. If she can land those Qs and heal herself back up, she can just do insane work sustaining her lane through pretty much anything. So with that Ignite burned uh, in the bottom lane on Morgana and with that level advantage already down and now we're seeing um, a sort of an equalization in that lane uh, as Jinx has a little bit of a farm advantage here 16 to 10 but uh, the the chance to get that early kill and to set Caitlyn behind and have that chain CC of the Morgana Q into the Jinx traps and then just wail away on her and get an early kill, get that first blood onto your Jinx, make that a lane that Caitlyn needs to be afraid of, that opportunity is gone now. I mean, of course, you can always land that Morgana Q, you can always get the uh, Flame Chompers to follow it up now, but Caitlyn's going to be able to net away from you now. Uh, Soraka's going to be able to uh, heal, heal people up very quickly now, um, especially since she's so effectively been landing those Qs again. We mentioned before, Soraka, definitely, I mean, only second to the Morgana that she's facing, uh, is definitely the number one pick here for X-Pike in that support role. So, we're going to see an insane amount of sustain coming out of that bottom lane. Going to be very proficient with landing those Qs on her, healing herself back up. Going to be that health battery to make sure Caitlyn stays nice and healthy. So, the trades are just going to be less and less favorable here coming out for this blue side in the bottom lane as it looks like we are about to get back in game here as the pause timer is running out and Vladimir so low from that poison gonna have to be very careful speaking of having to be careful here's Nidalee going down to the razor beaks first blood on the jungle all those raptors are gonna be insane to deal with in the late game now <laughs> uh, perhaps a little distracted by coming in after a pause here. <laughs> didn't quite, didn't quite manage that properly though. Uh, not the worst back timing. Does of course complete her jungle item, pick up a health pot there. Could have been worse for sure from that uh, in Italy. And Vladimir is now going to be able to sustain back up. He, of course, does still have plenty of biscuits to chomp down. And will be able to just use the abilities in his kit to just spell vamp on up. Looks like Nidalee is going to be looking to make a play here. Since perhaps getting a little confident um, from being able to bully that uh, Vladimir early on. That's a lot of damage coming on to him. The adhesive going to be throwing down. There's the pounce from Nidalee, and there's the actual first blood. And it does, in fact, involve Nidalee, but it will be a uh, first blood going on to Nidalee this game. Very good dive there. Waiting, uh, tanking as much of that turret damage as possible was Vladimir, and then 
pooling away to make sure he doesn't tank that extra turret shot. So we see some trades here back and forth in the bottom lane. Again, the sustained advantage of that Soraka starting to really show here as Jinx getting uh, some damage on her. Nothing too in intense, but I mean, there's no real way to sustain through that at this point. Uh, I only, of course, the Doran's Blade and the Morgana Spell Vamp, but not really going to be uh, making the most use out of either of those right now is this red side. Gold is even right now uh, for both sides. Unfortunately for Vladimir, not quite able to get that Hextech Revolver on the first back, just getting two Amp Tomes here. And thrown into the turret aggro, gonna pull away and be alright. Uh, but good play there from the Singed, always aware of himself positionally here. If there's any chance he can create some extra uh, damage coming in from a turret, he certainly will uh, take the opportunity to do so here. Of course, we do want to touch on, did start with that tier. So going to be looking to uh, stack that up very quickly here and make use out of that uh, passive to get a bonus armor here. Lots of damage coming out in both of these ganks here. Morgana stepping on the trap, unfortunately for her, not able to get in the correct position to get a Q to keep her just in range of that jinx. Uh, so just overall another trade, and that actually looks to be a favorable trade for the blue side in the bottom lane, of course, Syndra. Gonna take quite a bit of damage from that cube. Gotta be careful if she's gonna stay in this lane now. It could be one empowered Q away from death. And there it is! Right as we were saying that another Q. Syndra just not respecting the damage a mid lane karma can uh, bring right now. Those early game Qs do so much damage. It's, you know, it's absolutely disgusting to just watch. I mean, depending on which side you're rooting for here. Uh, it'll be a great, a beautiful thing, or something that is uh, painful to watch. Usually uh, on the opposite side of those cues myself, so I tend towards the disgusting side of the interpretation here, but uh, definitely needs to be something that this Syndra respects here. She is going to pick up that Chalice to get a little bit of MR here. Whereas uh, going straight for the Morella Nomicon is going to be that Karma. For the blue side here. And lands a long range spear, but the turnaround is gonna result in a kill onto the Morgana from the pool. Actually, probably not the worst time to give a kill to the support as that blue buff is gonna help Morgana really spam out her abilities, try and create some engages. The max range Q from deep as well. Very good Morgana play in this bottom lane here. And that is unfortunately just going a little too deep was Nidalee. Perhaps having flashbacks of raptors <laughs> in this bottom lane. It was great uh, game sense, of course, to so, know you gotta burn that flash to get in range for the pounce, but it just was a little overestimation of the damage she had bringing out here. I mean, going for that juggernaut. Or, excuse me, the uh, Cinder Hulk enchantment here. She just doesn't have that much uh, damage to throw out onto the table right now. And Singe looking to harass this Vladimir quite a bit in that top lane. Of course, Vladimir still doesn't have that uh, extra sustain from the revolver, so that is very meaningful poke. It's gonna force him to chew through those biscuits as quickly as possible here. As Soraka putting on a clinic with landing those cues. I mean, that's the hold that thought actually because it's gonna flash into the ultimate here and the Sejuani not gonna land her ultimate. Good cue on the way out, but that is two ultimates uh, for nothing here as well as the flash on the Morgana. Of course, I suppose did get both the summoners of the AD carry, Caitlyn, and the flash of Soraka. So not really for nothing, but resulting in no kill. So they do get to shove this wave here in the bottom lane, in the turret. Gonna look to head right on back here after stepping on some cupcakes. Great dodge there of the Q, and here's the contest of the crab. So important here, you're gonna be getting that crab. Uh, and I'm not even kidding, very important crab here as the dragon is looking to be contested soon. There is the ignite down. 
from Karma. Doesn't end up resulting in a kill onto Syndra here. Nidalee Spear just going over the shoulder of that Syndra. You're gonna use that Q animation, just slightly bend out of the way here. Um, there's the root coming in. Does land her knockback, actually misses the Q onto Syndra. That could have been the kill there if that Q had landed, but unfortunately for Karma, not gonna be the case here. And now Syndra gonna be heading back as we see the Slugfest breaking out in the top lane here. Not quite enough uh, damage here in the mid lane to actually take this turret. Uh, but there is going to be quite a bit of uh, slugs. And I mean, Vlad running right through that poison, taking a lot of damage. You've got to be very careful right now. There's the adhesive. Oh, doesn't make the throw, but he's chasing hard. And there's the throw. There's the poison. Will he get that last little bit? The poison isn't enough. Singe maybe overestimating how much poison or how much damage that poison would do those last few ticks, but he is quite low himself, so he's got to be careful here. Because actually, that's going to be the back coming out. And I'll be interested to see here, as the synergy double ward there in the bottom bush, uh, I'll be interested to see where that singed opts to go here, if he opts to go back to that top lane just while on foot, and that looks like what he will be doing here to try and maintain that teleport summoner spell for a possible dragon breaking out. As Vladimir, almost with that uh, uh, Will of the Ancients completed here, going to be able to spell vamp just fine in that top lane. Going to shove that wave in to the turret right as Singed arrives. And now will Vladimir opt to walk back the lane as well, or perhaps walk straight to the dragon? No, he's going to go back up to top lane here. Both top laners taking the long route to conserve their teleports because they know any action in this bottom lane or mid lane can absolutely result in the first dragon of the game. Both sides opting not to rush it, but they're speaking of uh, rushing it, here's they said wanting to come in, oh they have Morgana Q just out of range, and she's gonna walk right through the flame chompers and be just fine. Soraka making it out with her life, a very blessed Soraka <laughs> right now. Now uh, Singe not able to do nearly enough damage to this Vladimir with that Will of the Ancients completed here. Going to be doing just fine. Singe stacking up that tier of course. Looking at the stack right now we see uh, about halfway stacked already. Uh, just from toggling that Q on off of it. The blue buff is contested here. And perhaps a little too deep. With nowhere to run, she's gonna flash, gonna pounce, but there's the stun, and there's the ultimate, the Jinx ultimate does miss it, but that will be Syndra taking up the ultimate in the end, and there's a beautiful flash to get out of range of the zap from Jinx, coming out of Karma, but in the end, that is a jungler for nothing for a failed blue buff contest here, and now the dragon is wide open here. I mean, there are a couple of low members, but especially with that karma going back right now, uh, red side, or excuse me, the blue side just banking on the fact that they're not going to start the dragon off here uh, from the Amazon Amazon team on the red side. And it looks like they are largely correct here. Going to be taking the crab, going to be thinking about it here. As it's going to be a little bit before the blue side gets back in position to contest this dragon correctly here. So he's going to be thinking better of hanging out to try and finish off that pink board. Actually going to throw Vladimir into that poison, harass him down a little bit. But just like that, here's the first dragon of the game, uncontested, going over to the red side. The Storm 8 team uh, opting to just... Spend their recalls, let that first dragon go over to the red side, relax, take their time here, clear out some vision in the jungle, lay down some vision of their own, try and create some more picks here. Of course, in Italy, with that kill on her, uh, does have those cooldown boots built now, so she's going to be able to do a lot of damage just rotating through those abilities as quick as she can here. Vladimir bullying the Singe so hard in the top lane. Caitlyn, beautiful sidestep of the Morgana Q. I mean, 
The Morgana Qs have not been very on point this game. They certainly haven't been terrible, but I mean, just beautiful, perhaps more accurate is just beautiful dodging. Hold on, because that's a Hemo play coming out. Vlad chasing the Singe and <laughs> breaking the first law of League of Legends, but in the meantime, that's Karma getting taken out. I believe there's the ultimate or the Q from uh, Nidalee here. As Karma gonna make it out with the speed buff and the shield just barely. Let's watch that again really quickly here. We'll jump back, we'll keep our eyes peeled uh, on the uh, Karma here to see how this happens. Gonna just be running out trying to get involved in the top lane here, but unfortunately for her side, Wani and the uh, Syndra were both here. Oh, 20, sub 20 hit points. That's gotta hurt, and unfortunately Sejuani just not fast enough. Very painful to see here. That Karma gonna be making it out with her life. Unfortunately, I mean the Super Mega Death Rocket is available. Jinx might have thought of throwing it down the mid lane just for the blind shot. But without the vision, not gonna be confident enough to do so. But then, actually, maybe I spoke too soon, is gonna throw it out just a little bit wide there, unfortunately. Not gonna find her, thinking that she stepped off to the side there. They do not know that that's down though. I don't believe they saw it until it was in base. Uh, perhaps they were watching base and saw that uh, ultimate come out. So feeling a little bit more confident here. But that will be Nidalee bringing out some heals to this uh, Karma, who is of course going to be chugging through those blast charges. I believe she is out now though, so she's going to have to be very careful here. Just looking to create a little pressure on this mid lane turret before they head back here. Actually, I am looking to take take the turret here. So Zwani doing her best to get in the thick of those minions and try and uh, AOE them down. They will be able to clear out that wave. So we see the upgraded warding trinket coming out from the Vladimir here in the top lane. Always good to see that. Uh, another functional uh, sight stone, really. Um, so it's always good to see that plenty of wards are going to be coming out for this blue side team here. As we see the uh, three sweepers already swapped out by the red side here. Going to be trying to deny that vision that's going to be coming out from the blue side as much as possible. Whereas the Storm A team looking to just continue to encroach their vision deeper and deeper into the red side. I mean, looking at the scores, they're fairly even in game right now. but. The red side for Amazon Amazon, barely any wards uh, on the line of scrimmage, whereas the map littered with wards by this blue side here in Storm 8. And some fairly aggressive pink wards as well, following up that uh, huge Vladimir who's been absolutely bullying the Singe. Unfortunately doesn't have any uh, kills on himself yet, but is so far ahead of that Singe, absolutely able to decimate him in that lane right now. As the camera chooses not to rotate to the top lane where the action is happening here. The Hemo flag coming out, not going to result in anything though, as that is a dead Vladimir. Perhaps pushing a little bit too confidently here. Uh, he does have those two pinks out, but if uh, you don't have the wards to follow it up deeper in the jungle as well. Oh, the every Q it seems this game is so unfortunate for Morgana, not any fault of her own, but just absolutely on the tip of the max range, not able to land. And already Caitlyn healed up so much by that Soraka. Of course, the wish still available for Soraka as well. There's gonna be the wish coming out right as this engagement starts off. Nidalee gonna be looking to land that spear. Oh, it just goes a little bit wide past the Jinx there. Very unfortunate. Uh, but that will be some pressure alleviated in this bottom lane now as red side gonna think about uh excuse me playing a little bit more playing a little bit more defensively because they know that Millie is around but they now are gonna spot her out uh in this area looking to try and contest this blue buff and there's a beautiful stun onto both members there Cinder not gonna be able to grab the blue buff to get that extra mana restore here but is gonna just look to take it herself as they will rotate around, possibly try and take a mid turret off of this. As the Scuttlecraft will be going down for the red side, so that will be some impenetrable vision coming out. One 
Senseless Dragon is available here in about 30 seconds. And with that Speed Shrine available, they should be able to make some plays here. I mean, again, very close score here. I, only about five, 600 gold difference between these two teams. So we are looking to create some pressure in the mid lane. They are revealing that they're going to be giving up or they're going to be going for this dragon uh, very strongly right now. It's literally doing a little counter jump as well. It looks like they're going to go deep here, not actually going to be able to land uh, the damage onto that Syndra, who takes Vlad quite low, but unfortunately, there's Nidalee coming out of the jungle, and there's the reset onto Jinx, though, getting that speed up, the excitement coming in from that play. And that will be a one-for-one, one, and the smite is down, and all of a sudden, with that speed trying already on their side, and now with the uh, smite down for the blue side, that's going to be a possibly uncontestable dragon here for the red side to lo look to get their second dragon of the game. Beautiful Q there, forcing the flash out of the Soraka. And Caitlyn is going to be looking to get in the bottom lane turret, but actually will back off as Singed and gets to the top lane. The bottom lane does end up falling here. As they're looking to contest this dragon, but again, that smite not available. Nidalee's still in base, though so they do get the Morgana right off the bat here. And says, "Wani's he's so low. Vladimir chasing her down. Gonna be able to get him. In the end, Karma actually gets a with the ignite, I believe. That's a lot of damage, and all of a sudden, the red side has been forced off of this dragon. And Nidalee is back. Nidalee with that smite available. This looks to now be a dragon for the blue side. Beautiful stun there from Syndra in the jungle area. So those tight corridors uh, working well for the Syndra stun and the Singe. But Nidalee jumping in deep. Jinx perhaps getting a little bit too far forward there. But now Nidalee looks to be the one who's caught out a little bit. Going to be forcing a retreat here. But now Singe perhaps a little bit too far out. You never want to chase the Singe. But when he's that low, perhaps you can break the rules as that's another kill going over to this blue side. And this is what Stormmate needs to see here, but actually caught out is this uh, Karma here going down to the Syndra. What a bloody extended dragon fight this has been as we now see both teams meandering towards that dragon. Actually, the red side not following up immediately, but the blue side will still chase it after losing that Karma even. Karaka so low right now. Jinx Rocket does come out. Will it get Soraka? It does! So they will get the res uh, the timer on the dragon and a kill on the Soraka. A very good consolation prize there for the Jinx. You know, we had questions earlier. Hold that thought, because Morgana absolutely blown up right now. Gonna be taking the right way around that spear. Gonna maintain her life, actually. Chinks having to run away with that hunted mark on her. Gonna get a lot of return damage from those Qs though. Yeah, beautiful uh, shot there with the uh, Q from Jinx to know, okay, we're gonna throw, I'm gonna throw out my ultimate. They were low, this might get somebody. And you know, that's not what we saw earlier on in the match where there was an opportunity for her to throw that down mid lane. She hesitated a little bit and then did end up missing the kill onto that Karma. But this time does not hesitate and gets rewarded with the kill here. We see again the vision creeping deeper and deeper into the red side jungle despite again the game remaining within a 1k lead here. The defensive wards, I mean the wards getting more and more defensive for the red side and blue side actually getting more aggressive going forward here. So definitely forcing, despite what should be an even game, forcing the red side to play their game right now. Gotta be careful, does more again, but she's gonna be able to make it out of there. All right, relatively unscathed here. That's Singe, gonna back away the Vladimir. Oh, unfortunately not gonna be able to get that interruption. And for the first time, uh, I believe, in the game for any substantive amount of time, we have an actual 1k gold lead here. In favor of the blue side. There's a flash forward, and that will root the Syndra, who is quite low now. Gotta play safe here. 
trying to build up those balls, get her ultimate ready, but there's another shot from the spear on Nidalee. Singe is going to be doing good, zoning people away, keeping that Syndra nice and safe, and she's going to have to go back, but in the meantime, while all this is happening, Vladimir split pushing in the top lane, because it's become a 4v4 now, and all the blue side needs to do is continue to defend, but there's the throw, and Karma is chunked out, and there's the ultimate from Jinx taking Soraka so low, but not able to get the last bit of damage, and that will force the teleport from Vladimir to come out to this mid lane here, try and defend their turret, and that is going to be the ward going down immediately. As they will get a second ward for their uh, troubles here. And we're back to a state where, again, the gold lead is so close this game. This is absolutely anyone's game at this point. So Wani does not have that ultimate available, but she can just always charge forward, and that is uh, Singe going to be able to survive with the black shield. So low, blocking out that last bit of damage in there is the ultimates coming out to finish off Vladimir and Caitlyn caught up by that Q, nowhere to run, and she will be going down as well. And all of a sudden, that's the two kills that this red side needed, and now Amazon bursting into the lead here, reversing that 1k gold deficit to a near 1k gold advantage here. Definitely what they wanted to see. That's gonna be Morgana quite low here, needs to back away. Gonna throw a black shield on Jinx so the AD carry can body block for it. Wow, so much damage here. We do see uh, the Rod of Age is coming out here. For this Nidalee, it is halfway stacked at this point in the game. Gonna be coming, e going to be becoming even more of a nightmare going forward uh, as she looks to get up some extra magic resist that could be um, an abyssal scepter for when she dives in to get that uh, AOE magic resist reduction. Uh, but hold that thought here, because Syndra is ignited, taking quite a lot of sin, trying to throw out the pool to slow her, or excuse me, the uh, adhesive to slow her. But that's not going to be enough as the final Q does get the kill on the Syndra. And now into their jungle though, there's the chain CC, beautiful, onto that uh, Soraka who is quite low. And that will be Jinx with uh, the assist of Sejuani finishing her off Singe. So low himself, beautiful sidestep of the Q though. He's going to make it out alive and this is why you don't chase Singe. Singe just too tanky already and that is the resets coming in for Jinx. That will be the crab going down, and that is going to be a dragon likely going over to their side here in a minute with those kills coming in. Now, from the first substantive gold lead in the game going over to this red side, they have a beautiful timing here to recall, come back to the dragon right as it's spawning. They have the invulnerable scuttle crab for vision for that speed shrine, and they should be able to take their dragon lead up to 1 to 2 here. As we see Syndra now looking to do some real damage here with that Luden's Echo completed. She has quite a bit of magic resist, even opting to go for the MR boots here. With how much AP damage there is coming out from this uh, blue side, I certainly don't blame her. I mean, the Nidalee bringing that damage alongside the Karma. The Soraka, fairly negligible once you build any amount of MR. Uh, but the Vladimir, absolutely insane uh, amounts of damage there. Thanks, of course, to his passive. Um, as he gets tankier, he's just going to bring out more and more damage here. As finally that pink ward being cleared out by Syndra here, starting to deny some of that vision. So that will actually be the dragon going over to the blue side. I mean, despite that speed trying control, taking just a little bit too long to rotate back down into it. Perhaps feeling a little uh, bit mind-gamed here, not having the confidence to know that they're in the lead at this point and try and capitalize on that, or even not wanting to risk it at this point. Just wanting to play a little bit more safe with that lead. That is, of course, only the second dragon of the game for the blue side, not the critical third dragon yet to get that speed boost. And in the meantime, of course, Sin split pushing in that top lane, but hold that fuck is Caitlyn gonna be 100 0 by the Syndra with the help of her Ignite. But the return kill on Nidalee, beautiful flash from Syndra, gonna delay what could be the inevitable here. 
Good sidestep on that spear, but Soraka looking to just let this one happen here. As the Singe is going to be teleporting in, going to look to try and get the X-Pike here. And he's taking quite a bit of damage. But hold that thought here against Vladimir. Beautiful pull there, but he will get caught by the Flame Chompers after all, right as he comes out of that. So that's a turret and a kill going on to Jinx. Singe unfortunately not able to bring the damage to get the kill here. The Jinx on another turret. They're gonna bring these minions to the turret and Jinx is gonna be left alone here. Perhaps long enough, Singe is gonna be able to run interference onto that admittedly <laughs> beautiful toss mid pounce. And that will be another turret going down over this Amazon Amazon team and all of a sudden the tables seem to have turned. Jinx getting the kill. 7-0-4 now. Is this Jinx barely making it through the base gate? Is Karma. Base gates save lives yet again here. And wow, just like that, we see this game starting to edge over in favor of this Amazon Amazon team on the red side. Storm 8 on the blue side had this game uh, very close and slightly in their advantage for a while here. But now it seems like that advantage is absolutely evaporated and they are now going to be forced to try and climb the mountain that has become this Amazon Amazon team here. Oh, even denying the turret, I can't believe it. 30 hit points on that turret, wow. It's so painful for this uh, Amazon Amazon team to see that. I mean, hopefully they'll be able to send somebody up there to just go blow on it and <laughs> knock that turret over. Um, but Stormy, I mean, doing all they can here to try and Keep that gold deficit at a manageable rate right now. Denying as much as they can, but Jinx so strong right now. Look at the damage coming out from the Jinx Rockets. The uh, wish needing to be blown just to keep that Nidalee alive from a couple of Jinx Qs. And there, the, here comes the blow onto the turret. And there it is. Beautiful Sedge Wani Ultimate catches to the Flame Chomper. is going to follow up that CC. Jinx getting a double kill. The now legendary Jinx. I believe that was actually only a single kill onto the Jinx, but it might as well have been a double with the amount of damage this Jinx is doing. 8 0 oh, 5 now, but hold that thought because there goes Nidalee again going down. Jinx doing insane amounts of damage with those Qs. Gonna flash forward. Very aggressive flash here, but gonna be able to just waltz through the bottom lane. No, she will go down to the turret. And Vladimir is locked up here, so despite the pool, that will just delay the inevitable. And there is the eventual ace coming out for this Amazon Amazon team. And all of a sudden, through these past two team fights, this game, oh god, the singe goes down just before the aggro wears off of him. And that, that's a bit of a consolation prize for the Storm 8 team. But all of a sudden, this game getting out of control here. And it's starting to look similar to the last game. I mean, Sejuani, certainly, uh, we talk about the claims made in this game uh, during the pick ban phase. Jinx was not going insane for a long time until after the laning phase ended. So that claim that Caitlyn, you know, we're going to uh, take this Caitlyn into Jinx, not worry about it. That's going to be fine. Uh, and despite the uh, Ignite Summoner spell coming out from the support here on the red side, it didn't end up creating a huge lead. So it worked out well for this blue side team. Hold that thought, the Dragon's low, or excuse me, Baron's low. They will secure the Baron, despite the Jinx ultimate. And then, oh, Sejuani not able to get in front of her in time, but that is a beautiful Baron pickup here for this blue side. They absolutely need that. They're gonna wanna defend here, but so low is Soraka from the Luna's Echo, so much damage, but there's the Sejuani, and that is exactly what we wanted to talk about after these kills come out. Unfortunately, Vladimir nowhere to go here. Gonna be going down despite the Zonias. And that is exactly what I wanted to talk about. Despite being able to maintain themselves through that Jinx lane with the uh, Ignite, make sure that doesn't have too much of an effect. And hold on, here's the going down again. Is Karma another member going down as this is an undefendable inhibitor? But 
Again, that's what we were talking about here, is the Sejuani. She has made the plays. She did not create huge plays early on in the game. Perhaps it was a uh, correct call there not to ban her for the early stages, if that was the concern. But she has been so mechanically sound as this game has gone on. She has landed very beautiful ultimates on the exact targets she needed to. She got done exactly what she needed to get done. And now... Sejuani has become as scary as she was last game. 4-1 and 13. It took her a while, but the mechanics are there, and you've got to respect the mechanical proficiency on the Sejuani. It looks like the blue side is going to try and take their third dragon of the game here. I mean... Good plays here to take this dragon and the Baron beforehand, despite now being at a huge disadvantage. Now 10k gold uh, deficit here. Actually going to jump out and leave that dragon because there were too many people coming here. The attempts to steal not going to make it. Jinx does secure with a single auto attack there. Lucky for the red side, there was a lot of damage coming in. Baron buff still on a couple of these members for the blue side here. But again, just to finish that thought, the Sejuani has really lived up to the uh, uh, game that we saw in game one here. Absolutely going insane, landing very critical ultimates, even without that ultimate, starting off a lot of engagements just with that charge forward to get that knock up. The, di the displacement absolutely critical in starting off some of these fights that became what is now this spiral out of control. Morgana actually caught out a little bit here, just barely making it out alive, but there's again a beautiful Sejuani ultimate to stop anything from coming out. Jinx doing quite a bit of damage with the Super Mega Death Rocket, gonna uh, face tank the Caitlyn ultimate to save the Morgana, and that's gonna be two kills, three kills. Jinx gonna get a fourth kill as well, not the Quadra, but the fourth kill for her team here and just barely walking out of it alive is Morgana. And that looks to be the game here. Vladimir is going to be stopped from recalling by this annoying singe. Not going to be able to make it happen, unfortunately, is Vladimir. There's no way he's going to be able to make it out of here in time. And that is the game here. <laughs> singe not wanting to give himself up as a kill in the last second, but that is the game. Going over to Amazon, Amazon gonna be getting the series 2-0 and and that is uh, Amazon, Amazon promoted up to, or proceeding on to the round of eight next week here in the After Hours Gaming League. And again, as we look at the final score screen for this game, it looks very similar to the previous game we had in game one, despite how even this was, for so long in the game, I mean, the blue side, the Storm 8 team, had a minor advantage. It was essentially even, but they had around a 1k gold lead for the majority of this game, it felt like. And then s something happened. The mid-game hit, they couldn't make anything work with that uh, advantage, that minor advantage early. And there was just a little bit of a, a few engagements that they needed, you know, singed. Getting that uh, tier stacked up so we got the Seraphs built. Uh, Jinx starting to hit some of her item breaks here to get a couple items down. Sejuani getting the tankiness uh, built up here to synergize with that Cinder Hulk, make the most out of that passive on it. And then the game just got out of hand. Sejuani, so mechanically sound, again, landing those uh, abilities on the people she needed to, not just for engage, but for counter engage when the uh, blue side a little bit overextended every now and again. So punishing was this Amazon, Amazon team. And, you know, when you have this kind of team where that such one is creating opportunities, then Jinx goes insane. You know, then Jinx started to spiral out of control. Jinx was not an insanely fed champion for the majority of this game. Again, she became somebody that just started racking up one kill after another, after another, after another, and then you know what? Once she was in the mid game, she was able to get a couple kills to kickstart her into the late game, and then she became the hyper carry jinx we all know and fear. Um, overall, looking at the damage totals again, uh, this jinx, if I can actually scroll over here, ugh, jinx, almost 40k damage in this game. 
Uh, so, so much damage coming out, outclassing by an order of magnitude everyone else in the game here. And, you know, again, that speaks to what we saw last game with, with this 80 carry for the Amazon Amazon team. He is just so proficient at so many 80 carries that if he gets the chance to get out of control, he will spiral out of control. Um, so what you've got to do is find ways to not let him spiral out of control. And again, we saw until about the mid game, Jinx and Sejuani were sort of not spiraling out of control here. This was a very close game, and there wasn't a very decided advantage in either direction here. But Sejuani is a champion that Iron Sheep is just too sound on. So he's able to find opportunities with that champion to use her kit to create opportunities for the rest of his team, and that is the true power of Iron Sheep Sejuani is enabling the rest of his team to create plays to spiral the game out of control, which is what we saw in both of these games here. And again, you know, we talked about that very heavily during the pick ban phase for the second game here. The uh, the goal to pick a Nidalee <laughs> into that, uh, to first pick a Nidalee when they particularly left Sejuani up. It was a very bold play and it worked out for the early game and into a bit of the mid game but the mechanical proficiency on that Sejuani just started to shine through from there on out and there was nothing that this teammate or the storm eight team could do to answer it at that point and you know going forward in the f next week whoever this Amazon Amazon team ends up against they're gonna absolutely have to ban that Sejuani this these two games have shown that that Sejuani cannot be dealt with even if you get a good start against her she, Iron Sheep is just too good on her. She she has the mechanics in her kit, and Iron Sheep has the mechanical proficiency with that kit. So it's got to be a ban coming out, uh, and you know possibly there's got to be some interesting um, early game uh, focus on ganking that bottom lane to try and put the AD carry for this Amazon Amazon team behind, uh, because you know when left on par. That AD carry can spiral out of control no matter who he uh, ends up on. But overall, that is the game going over to Amazon. Amazon again, they will be going on to the round of eight next week uh, as they went 2 0 here against Storm 8. So, congratulations to Amazon. Amazon, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed these games. If you want to stay tuned to all the upcoming matches and the schedules for those matches, you can, of course, visit the beautiful website linked on your screen here. Well, not linked because I don't. I haven't figured out annotations yet. Bear with me. <laughs> but uh, the website displayed on your screen right now, after AfterHoursGaming.tv, all of the matches will be posted there. Of course, you can stay tuned to this channel where I will be casting games next week as well. And uh, later uh, today, I will be casting the Amazon Prime versus Intel match that will be at 4 p.m. Pacific time. So uh, an hour and 15 minutes from now. Please stay tuned to watch that. That should be a very nice game as well. And thank you for tuning in. I hope you had a good time, and I will see you guys later today.